Welcome back to our conversation with the president of the Massachusetts Senate, Senator Karen Spilka. So, Senator, you're a big advocate for full funding of the Student Opportunity Act. That was yes. a, a bill expanding on a large scale spending for public education that was passed just before the pandemic hit. Um, there's some other, and I want you to talk about why, but there's also uh, a couple of other issues swirling around in public education. The Mass Teachers Association indicates that they want the right to strike. Do you think that's a good idea? Uh, I think that we need to ensure that our children continue to stay in school and get the education. Uh, so I think that this is something that, that we need to, to talk further about with them. Uh, but our first and foremost priority should be, has to be, keeping our kids in school. Uh, they also want to do away with the MCAS as a high stakes test. They wanted to do away with it since, since it was instituted. Right. Yay or nay right. on that? You know, I, I believe that, that that we should have more alternatives to testing than just the MCAS for certain students. Uh, that was the intention too, I believe, when it was first passed back in 1993. Not all students are able to take these types of tests. So I, I, I am open to exploring other and more alternatives for, for certain students. So here comes this influx of funds into the public education system uh, under the uh, Student Opportunity Act. And, you know, there's talk that, and, and this happens all the time, that other public employee unions will see, and uh, uh, some of this money will go to teacher salaries, correct, as, as well it should, yes. uh, that other employee unions will see this as an opportunity to say, hey, what about us? We want raises commensurate with this. Any concerns you have about that kind of inflationary pressure on our budget? Well, I, I think uh, most of the publics, at least the state public unions, uh, their contracts are negotiated through uh, the governor and her administration now in, in the coming years. Uh, so they will be working with the appropriate union to determine uh, what the terms and, and conditions of their collective bargaining agreements are. And then the public sector and the municipalities, they, they do it there. Uh, so, yeah, certainly I believe we need to have uh, fair and reasonable wages in, in all aspects. So, uh, you know, I think it's up to the, the public entity to determine that. All right, uh, I want to use our final moments here to return to your acceptance speech. Uh, you referred to a bill that you've been championing that would help contain prescription drug costs. And you said, quote, hopefully third time's the charm. Why has that bill stalled and what what needs to happen for it to move? And what would it do? Yeah, the, the bill uh, would actually lower prescription drugs in Massachusetts dramatically, I believe. Uh, it would cap certain drugs, the prices per month. Uh, it would make it so that uh, the pharmaceutical costs would go before the, the board that looks at the costs of the providers, our hospitals, our providers, our insurance companies. Pharmacy is, the pharmaceuticals are the one thing that currently are not a part of looking at the increases in our overall health care costs, but they play a really big role. They should be a part of that, and they, they should be looked at as well. So it would include that. It has many provisions, and I think it would really help. I still, when I go out in my district, I still hear from our seniors and others yep. that they are cutting back on, on their pharmaceuticals because they can't afford it and, and food. Has this passed the Senate in the past? Twice but not the house. Correct. So over there is the problem. Well, they haven't passed it yet. Senator, good to see you. Great to see you too. Happy New Year to you. Happy healthy look New Year. Look forward to having you back here during the new year. Thank you. I look forward to it as well. All